O. The Jello program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston and Phil Harris and his orchestra. The orchestra opens a program with Hooray for Hollywood from Hollywood Hotel. Oftentimes, there is some one thing that seems to have extra pleasant associations for us. It may be a place, it may be a song, it may be a word. For instance, a letter we received just the other day says, The word jello will always mean something special to me because it's almost the one dessert I can remember having as a youngster. I remember the picture of the jello girl on the box. I remember jello's bright party colors. I feel as if I'd grown up with jello, and it's a friend I'll never forget. Well, we hope a lot of you feel that way about jello. It has been America's favorite dessert for over 40 years. And the only changes in Jell-O have been to make it even better. Jell-O has a deeper, richer, more satisfying fruit taste than ever before. And Jell-O sets more quickly now. It's quicker and easier to prepare. But remember, there is only one Jell-O. There's always been only one Jell-O. So don't accept any substitutes for the real thing. Look for the big red letters on the box that always spelled Jell-O. Hollywood played by the orchestra. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this being the first day of daylight saving time, we bring you a man who saves time, money, and old pieces of string, <laughs> Jack Benny. Yeah. Yeah. Hello again, this is Jack Benny who also saves paper bags. They come in mighty handy, too. Well, Don, if we were in the East now, we'd have an extra hour today. Sixty whole minutes to do with as we please. Uh, what would you do with yours? Well, Jack, if I had an extra hour, I think I'd go on a diet. You know, uh, not eat anything. Not eat anything for a whole hour? <laughs> Why, Don, that would be a drastic move for you, wouldn't it? Yes, but I should do it anyway, Jack. I think I'm getting a little plump. Oh, a little plump? <laughs> yes. <laughs> He's getting plump. Oh, well. <laughs> Listen, Don, if I were a penny weighing machine and saw you coming toward me, I'd pull up my scales and run. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> You're just F-A-T. Oh, I not only resent that, but deny it. Anyway, we were talking about daylight saving time, weren't we? You know, Jack, I forgot all about our show going on an hour earlier. When I got up, I had to run over here like a streak of lightning. Boy, I had to rush. I know, Phil, and those pajamas are very becoming. <laughs> I'm glad you like them. Imagine coming to the studio in pajamas. You didn't even bother to dress. I did, too. I never wear the tops. <laughs> oh. Well, I noticed that at least you took time to curl your hair. I did not. It's a mess. <laughs> well, anyway... <laughs> Well, anyway, just because we're on an hour earlier today is no excuse for being careless, you know. Say, Jack, why do they have daylight saving time in the east and not out here? Well, Mary, that's so the people there can get up an hour earlier in the morning, and then when evening comes, they have an extra hour of sunshine. Suppose it's raining. Well, then they have an extra hour of rain. Uh, like we have here? Quiet. <laughs> it never rains in California. Never. Well, gee, I wish someone had told my uncle that this morning. Which uncle? The one with the wooden leg that warped. <laughs> Look, Mary, you asked me a question. I answered it. Now, leave me alone. Say, Jack. Oh, fine. <laughs> <laughs> what is it, Kenny? You know, I, I, I can't understand one thing about daylight saving time. What's that? Well, this morning I set my watch 60 minutes ahead. And when I came to the broadcast, I was an hour too early. Why was that? Well, look, Kenny, you didn't have to set your watch ahead. That's only in the east. 
Do you realize you're the only person in the whole state of California that did it? Was there a price for that? <laughs> yes, bend over. <laughs> what a kid, he's hopeless. Well, at least I know rain when I see it. Yeah. <laughs> Never mind that. Now look, fellas, we have no more time to discuss rain or daylight saving because, as I announced last week, tonight we're going to do a very long play. In fact, it's a musical comedy. A musical comedy? Yes, Phil, if you'd show up for rehearsal, this wouldn't be such a shock to you. <laughs> oh, those rehearsals bore me more than the show. <laughs> oh, that's too bad. Now listen, fellas, we gotta do something to make Phil happy here. Now you're talking. Shut up or I'll fire you. <laughs> Anyhow, tonight, ladies and gentlemen, the Benny Light Opera Troupe will present, will present what we consider a real masterpiece. We're going to offer our version of Walt Disney's sensational film and supreme achievement, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Now, uh, this will go on immediately. Hey, Jack, I didn't see that picture. What's a dwarf? A dwarf, Kenny, is a jockey with a long beard. <laughs> now, in our version... Am I going to be a dwarf, Jack? You, Don? <laughs> <laughs> what are you laughing at, eh? He couldn't be a dwarf in an elephant act. <laughs> well, you'll be in it anyway, Don. Now, in our musical comedy version, folks, as none of us look like dwarfs, we are going to call our play Snow White and the Seven Gangsters. Uh, Mary Livingston, who is scared to death of these gangsters, will be Snow White. Now, let's see. There's also a Prince Charming. Say, Jack, can I be Prince Charming? Over my dead body. <laughs> let's see, who else? Oh, the witch. Uh, where's that witch I hired? Here I am. <laughs> Gee, is she going to be my stepmother? Yes, and she's going to give you a poisoned apple. You stool pigeon. Quiet, you old bat. <laughs> uh, now, uh, our cast is complete. Except, oh, where's Andy? Here I am, Buck. Am I going to be one of the dwarves? No, Andy, you're going to be a gangster, not a dwarf. Shucks, and I went out and had my legs shortened. <laughs> Leg shorten? How'd you do that? I glued him to a cheap pair of pants and went out in the rain. Now, the next one that says it rains in California, I'm going to hit him right over the head with my umbrella. <laughs> now, remember, fellas, we're all gangsters, and I'm going to be the roughest, toughest, meanest one of them all. Just a no-good rat, see? Wow. I'm as tough as any of those movie gangsters, ain't I, Mary? Yeah, you're a regular Edward G. Buttercup. <laughs> well, just the same, I can act tough. Say, Jack, do we all have to be hard-boiled? Of course, Don, and you ought to get into the mood. I think. Okay. Now, uh, get this, ladies and gentlemen. You better rush down to your nearest grocer and get a package of Jell-O. See? It comes in six delicious flavors. See? That's telling them, Don. Strawberry, raspberry, cherry, orange, lemon, and lime. See? That's it. I guess they see, Don. Now, folks, our play will go on immediately after Kenny Baker's song. What are you going to sing, Kenny? One song from the pitcher Snow White. One false move, now let you turn it. Okay, Kenny, let's have it. Okay. Right. <laughs> Possessed me One love Thrilling me through One song My heart keeps singing Of one love Only for you With a song I come to you Like a troubadour That and nothing more I have no lute to play No tinkling guitar Just a song to tell you 
how sweet to me you are. One song, I have but one song, one song only for you. One heart tenderly beating, ever in Constantly true One love that has possessed me One love thrilling me through One song my heart keeps singing Of one love only for you I have but one song, one song for you. My song of One song from Snow White sung by Kenny Baker. And thanks, Kenny. It was certainly apropos. You said it, son. Hmm. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, for our musical comedy, Snow White and the Seven Gangsters. We will present this little fairy tale in four acts and 39 scenes. So take off your shoes, folks. You got to stay in tonight. Here we go. The opening scene is the isolated farmhouse on Long Island, which is the hideout of the notorious Benny Gang. As the curtain rises, Doc Benny is giving his boys a pep talk. Curtain. Music. Now listen, men. We got a big job on for tonight. The biggest thing we've tackled since we cracked the mint. We're gonna stick up the 12th National Bank. Do you get that? Yeah. 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 I'll call the roll, see if we're all here. Sleepy. Here, Doc. Sneezy. Could you, Doc? Gesundheit. Happy. I'm right here, Doc, feeling fine and ready to go. <laughs> he wears... <laughs> he wears feather underwear, folks. <laughs> Grumpy. Right here, Chief. But I'm afraid we're going to get caught this time. Oh, you're too pessimistic. Bashful. Oh, shark Doc, you know I'm here. Now, come on over here with the rest of us. Oh, gee will. <laughs> A fine gangster. Now, let's see, who else? Oh, yes, Dopey. That's me, folks. <laughs> <laughs> and you're a fine crook, too, the way you waste your time. What do you mean? Well, I sent you out to pick pockets yesterday, and you wasted two hours on Fred Allen. <laughs> hmm. Imagine picking Allen's pocket. What did you find there? A hole. Oh. <laughs> he buries his money, eh? And you, Bashful. Oh, what's the matter, Doc? I sent you out to take a guy for a ride, and you went in separate cars. Well, gee, I didn't know him very well. <laughs> That's a great excuse. Now listen, fellas, you've been laying down on the job lately. I want you all to be up on your toes tonight. Say, Doc. What is it, Sleepy? What time are we going to rob the bank tonight? About 12 o'clock. <laughs> and don't be late like you always are. I'm afraid of that job, Chief. We're sure to get caught and be sent up the river for 20 years. Oh, we will, eh? How do you feel about it, Happy? Well, Grumpy's right. We'll all go to Sing Sing and never come out. Gee, it'll be awful. <laughs> hmm. Certainly got a brave bunch of men here, scared of your own shadow. I'm not scared. I'm dopey. <laughs> you said it. Now, remember, men, we got a big job on tonight, and we got to get some money. There's a payment due on our machine gun. <laughs> So let's all work together. Just as soon as our supply of dynamite gets here, we'll go. Come in. Package of dynamite for Doc Benny. <laughs> Sign here. Now, wait a minute. Is this dynamite good and strong? I think so. I had two arms when I started out. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> all right, men. Now, listen carefully. We'll meet tonight at exactly 11 o'clock in the alley right in back of the bank. Is that clear? Yeah, 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 yeah. What about you, Dopey? Do you know where we're gonna meet? If I forget, I'll ask a policeman. 
All right, but leave your girl home this time. Now remember, fellas, 11 o'clock in the alley behind the bank. And then do you know where we go from there? Where? Hi-ho, hi-ho, to rob the bank we'll go. I say we'll go and grab them go hi-ho, hi-ho. Hi-ho, 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 now don't be late, you know. We gotta work quick with our chisel and pick hi-ho, hi-ho. Hi-ho, 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 I'm sleepy that I know. And I'm so shy I nearly die, hi-ho, hi-ho. Hi-ho, 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 why don't you eat jello? Just try a dish, it's so delish. Hi ho, hi ho, hi ho, hi ho, hi ho. To rob the bank we'll go. A safe will blow and grab the dope. Hi ho, hi ho, hi ho, hi ho, hi ho. Now don't be late, you know. We gotta work quick with a chisel and pick. Hi ho, hi ho. The scene changes. We now take you to the home of Miss Snow White, who lives on Park Avenue with her cruel stepmother, Mrs. Agatha Witch. Oh, she's a meanie. Take it away, Park Avenue. Hello? Who? No, she can't talk to you, and don't be calling up here anymore. Goodbye yourself. Who was that, stepmother? That was your boyfriend, Prince Charming. A princess. <laughs> now listen, Snow. <laughs> I don't want you to go out with him anymore. He's just after your money. So are you. Well, I saw you first. <laughs> now don't you dare to leave this room, you little brat. Isn't she awful, folks? Shut up. <laughs> oh, why is my stepmother so cruel to me? Is she jealous of me for chance, or is she jealous of me good looks? I have it. She's just a rat. Oh, where is my Prince Charming? If he would just come and take me away, I'd be so happy. He'll be here, folks. That must be Prince Charming now. Here, Prince. Here, Prince. <laughs> come in. Aw, oh, Prince Charming. Hello, Snow White. <laughs> my little piccaninny. <laughs> oh, Prince, I'm so glad you're here. My stepmother's getting crueler every day. Boo-hoo-hoo-hoo. -hoo -hoo. Is that so? What's the matter with that old Mickey Finn? <laughs> Why, only this morning she tried to kill me. She gave me a poison apple for breakfast. Oh, what a low life that is. If I wasn't a prince, that gentleman and that coward, I'd smack her up and down. <laughs> and another thing, she says you're not a real prince. She says you're bogus. Bogus? That's my brother. I'm Boris. <laughs> but you are a real prince, aren't you? Why, certainly. I got a coat of arms with a belt in the back. <laughs> then I don't care what she says. I love you, my prince. And I love you, too, my little hunted child. Come into my arms. Oh, if you'd only take me away from here, I'd be so happy. Don't worry, my little sweetie cake. Someday I'll take you to my castle in the Catskills. <laughs> when? Someday. Oh, Someday, someday we'll go away, someday so far away, and how thrilling that moment will be, when the prince of my dreams comes to me, I'll whisper I love you, and steal a kiss or two, so I'm Oh, no. <laughs> and though you're not so hard, someday when my dreams come through. Hey, that was all right, wasn't it, folks? <laughs> Well, goodbye, darling. I have to go now. Where are you going, my prince? I'm going to take a ride in the park. Wait. I'll see if my horse is outside. Hi-ho, Silverstein! <laughs> so. So Prince Charming leaves. The door opens, and in walks the wicked stepmother. 
and says... No, wife. Who was that in here singing? Lawrence Kebbett. Well, he's slipping. <laughs> I know it was that Prince Charming, and I told you never to see him again. But I love him, stepmother. He's so handsome and romantic. I'll put a stop to this affair, you little fool. Here. Half an apple. Don't take it, Snow White. It's poison. Stay out of this, you kibbit, sir. <laughs> he's right, stepmother. This apple is poison. It is not. Then why is that worm waving a red flag? <laughs> You see? <laughs> I'll make you eat it. Come here, Snow White. No, no, I'll run away from home. That's what I'll do. I'll run away from home. Stop! Stop! No, no, I'll never see you again. Goodbye, stepmother. Goodbye, worm. Goodbye. <laughs> so little Snow White runs away from home. And two days later, we find her lost in a dense forest somewhere in Long Island. <laughs> Ah, here I am in the woods. And look at the animals following me. Oh, see the pretty birds. Hello, bird. That canary is somewhat of a critic. Gee, none of these animals are afraid of me. Look at that little pussy cat with a bushy tail. Come here, pussy. Oh, my mistake. Get away, pussy. That was a close one. And look at that little deer running after me. Isn't it cute? Hello, dear. Hello, honey. Fresh. Gee, I'm so tired and hungry. Oh, look, there's a farmhouse over yonder. Maybe I can get food and shelter there. Here I come, farmhouse. <laughs> All right, men. We're ready to rob the bank. Now, remember, this ain't no picnic, so everybody work fast and be on your guard. Say, Happy, where's the machine gun? <laughs> Over there in the sewing basket. That's great. Have you got your bag filled, Grumpy? Yep, I got a flashlight, a chisel, some dynamite, a blowtorch, and my nightshirt. <laughs> oh, we'll be home before morning. Hey, Dopey, stop chewing that dynamite. You'll blow your brains out. If I had any brains, I wouldn't be chewing it. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're all set now. Wait a minute, where's Sleepy? Hey, Sleepy, wake up. Hmm. <laughs> oh, gee whiz. Bashful, what are you blushing about? Well, look at Sleepy smiling. He must be dreaming about a girl. Well, you stay out of his dream. <laughs> anyway, we can do without him. Now let's go, men. And here's my final instruction. While we're robbing that bank, there's one thing that's very important. What's that, Chief? For heaven's sake, don't whistle while you work. Don't whistle while you work. Or the cops will come. We'll have to run. Be as quiet as a turk. You may quiet as a mouse. But I couldn't make it rhyme. Now come on, boys, and make no noise. We haven't got much time. I remember each of you. We know what we must do. Now you must be still. I know I will. La 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 la. Don't whistle while you work, or the cops you're bound to work. They'll get their man, put us in the can. Don't whistle while you work. Now don't forget. All right, men. We're on our way. Let's go. Wait a minute. I knew it. It's the cops. The cops? Gee, I bet they give us life this time. <laughs> Quiet. I'll handle this. Shh. Come in. Hello, everybody. My name is Snow White. Why, it's a girl. A girl? <laughs> yes, a girl. What do you want, Snow White? Gee, I thought this was a farmhouse. Aren't you all farmers? No, we're not farmers. We're bandits. And right now, we're going out to rob a bank. Rob a bank? Oh, you mustn't do that. Why not? It's naughty. Oh, it is. 
Did you hear that, fellas? It's naughty. Come on, man, tie her up and throw her in the cellar. Throw me in, too. <laughs> Grab her, man. Now, wait a minute, Chief. She can't harm us. Well, we're not taking any chances. Tie her up. But why do all you nice boys want to rob a bank? Don't you want to get into heaven? Yes, but we want to get into the bank first. <laughs> now, scram. She's right, Doc. Let's call the whole thing off. I'm in favor of it. Yeah, maybe I can get my old job back again. Your old job back? What did you do? I was a good humor man in a tough neighborhood. <laughs> oh. And I used to be an orchestra leader. That's a lie! <laughs> what were you, Dopey? I used to be a phrenologist. A phrenologist? What's that? I don't know. That's why I quit. <laughs> hmm, fine bunch of gangsters I've got. Now listen, Snow White. You listen to me, you big bad man. Hmm. You're all going to throw away your guns and stay right here. You're never going to rob another bank as long as you live. I'm willing. Me too. How about you, Doc? Nothing doing. This is my racket and I'm going to stick to it. Now, come on, Docky Walkie. Don't be a toughy wassy. Oh. Come on, Doc. Don't be a batty waddy. <laughs> oh, all right. I'm a sappy wappy. But I'll do it. Hooray! Hooray! Come in. Snow White, I'm so glad I found you. I've been looking all over for you. Prince Charming, I knew you'd come. Hooray! Hooray! Come, my little Snow White. We'll go back yonder to my castle and live happily ever afterwards. At last, at last. Someday we'll go away. Someday so far away. So So Prince Charming married little Snow White and Doc Benny went back to his old job peddling fish in Waukegan, Playfield. Bright blue skies, gay new fashions, new things to eat. These are the signs of spring. And here's the perfect dessert to fit the mood called Springtime Delight, the freshest, gayest dish you've tasted in ages and real easy to make with fruit-rich strawberry jello and just one cup of fresh strawberries. Dissolve a package of strawberry jello in hot water and chill until slightly thickened. Sweeten one cup of sliced fresh strawberries with a quarter cup of sugar, then add the berries to the thickened jello. Turn into a mold and chill until firm. It couldn't be easier to make, and it's well an inexpensive way to take advantage of the fresh strawberries just coming into the market. And wait till you taste it. The delicious extra rich fruit flavor of strawberry jello combined with the juicy sweetness of fresh berries. It's a grand springtime dessert, so try it soon. Just be sure to make it with genuine Jell-O. Ask your grocer for Jell-O. This is the last number of the 30th program in the new Jell-O series, and we'll be with you again next Sunday night at the same time. And um, I hope you all liked our musical comedy version of Walt Disney's famous picture, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Oh, Jack. Yes, Mary. You know, we forgot to do one of the best songs in the picture. Which one is that? The Wishing Well number, you know, where you hear the echo. Oh, yes. Well, I'll tell you what. Let's do it now. Andy, you get down in the well and do the echo. Okay. Hit it, boys. I'm wishing. I'm wishing. For the one I love to find me. To find me. Mary, hand me that bucket. Oh. Good night, folks. <laughs> Here's an important announcement. Starting this, here's an important announcement. Starting this week, Robert L. Ripley's Believe It or Not program will be heard Tuesday night instead of Saturday over most of these same stations. Be sure to see your local paper for the new time. This is the National Broadcasting Company. <laughs>